Okay, great. So the volume profile, and I know I beat this um, into everybody's ear constantly, but um, what I'm going to do is is run through the anatomy of the volume profile, and then we're going to focus on some key concepts and setup styles. That way it can be immediately applicable um, or at least reviewable for application. And um, and I want I want there to be a takeaway, an immediate takeaway from each of uh, these sections that are run today. <clears throat> so the volume profile is a study utilized to display the number of contracts traded or the volume at the specific price instead of time. Transacted volume signifies that there's an interest at that price level. And the presence of the volume or the lack of volume tells me about that interest specifically. When price moves, as long as volume builds or grows, that shows me that there's interest at the advertised price. Conversely, if volume dwindles, that tells me that there's a lack of interest. Application of this from the trading sense um, is gonna be discussed specifically on a few slides here soon and showing examples of a setup and multiple setups. But it's important to know that if you think of volume as interest, then you'll be able to manage your risk correctly, um, find areas applicable to uh, for entry. And, um, and so, what you're seeing here on the right is, and I, I'm, I know that we're all familiar with the image of a volume profile and is displayed on the y-axis. And so let's talk about a, a little bit of the glossary here. That way we're all clear on the same level. A high volume node is a peak of volume at the price level. A low volume node is a valley or lack of volume. Point of control is the largest high volume node. It's the price where the most volume upon session curves. The value area, and this is going to be a uh, very important piece of today's puddle, puzzle um, is the range encapsulated by 70% of the volume on that session or period. And the value area high is the high point of that value area. Value area low is the low point of that area. A volume build is simply the addition or accumulation of volume on the profile that results in a node. And the volume taper is a lack of accumulation, an area resulting potentially in a tail. Here, um, to isolate these specific points, high volume nodes are gonna be these peaks, low volume nodes are gonna be these valleys. Point of control signified by the red value area, highlighted as the, the light gray is the 70% of volume. I put a box around this, so it's clearly high and a low to that section. A volume build as price moves, if it continues to build a node, a node here, then uh, that would be a build. If volume pushes down and dwindles, that would be a taper. Now, what's something that I commonly stress is a primary LVN. A primary LVN. Well, how do we differentiate? So an LVN, we know, is this valley, whereas a primary LVN is going to just be the one that points out is the deepest. And we're going to, um, you'll see some examples here shortly, but let's start with the value area. So the value area activity provides not only an understanding of inventory placement, but also the understanding for the auction leg at hand. Let's define inventory. The value area itself is the range of volume that encapsulates 70% of the transacted activity on the profile, whether that's a session or a specific period that you utilize. Within the profile itself, this allows the users to see the bulk of the trade activity or highest in areas of interest inventory can be described as the recently transacted volume as it pertains to that session or if you're encapsulating a multi-session sequence in your overlapping areas of inventory in order to gauge the positioning for the highest areas of interest being that there's no way to know time frames of the other market participants utilizing value areas can help you avoid faulty bias for instance if price is unable to find interest into prior zones of value, that then, then the current direction at hand is seeking continuation. Uh, so if, if the prior value area was lower than where price is currently at, and price moves towards that value and turns away from it, it is simply rejecting that zone. Um, However, when finding interest back inside a prior value, you can seek the opposite end of the value zone. 
So if interest is escaping value, it comes back to test and is finding acceptance in a prior value area, then the equal and opposite end of that value area is then a target. In this example here, um, is specifically shown because we could see these candles push down out and away. And when they return, we traverse value and we oscillate to the other side before settling back in. So when it comes to visualizing value on the fly, building interest back inside a prior value can begin targeting that opposite direction, opposite end of the value. And of course, there's going to be roadblocks along the way with um, any low volume areas and so forth. But upon a breach into value, biggest thing, keep hammering this away. Um, the auction should be naturally seeking the opposite end. So this is going to help map out um, opportunity for entry and activity. For instance, if coming back into value, it is not only rejecting away, but it is also back inside of a low volume area, then you can also define your risk against and seek pushing a target to the other end. Value is very important. Um, we'll be looking at, um, let's see here, right now, here we go. So utilizing this as a big picture, okay, as far as planning goes, um, although there's, uh, uh, although the shape and build um, of prior sessions can be defined as day types, and that information is readily available all across the interwebs, I'm gonna be focusing on the application and utilization based upon these builds and how to employ them into a meaningful sequence. The top here is color-coded per session. We can see the RTH session, um, the Asia session in yellow and Europe in red. The session upon session uh, becomes a quicker time frame understanding uh, for planning activity. Knowing where the open is with respect to these allows you to have a keen understanding of that auction importance, as well as where to gauge direction. The lower um, image is the weekly profile. And so that allows you to gauge um, against the prior week's value. The relationship between value um, of profiles uh, are of particular importance. And we discussed what it means when we re-enter those zones. But in utilizing the, um, in utilizing even the visual of having them for reference, what we're going to do is individually um, use them as an immediate frame of reference and then also grouping and stacking them. Stacking of the value simply means as they overlap certain areas, then you can begin to create a synthetic composite, allowing you to, um, to see a wider range of balance. And so by boxing them and treating them as a wide value distribution. It's going to help with awareness of the auction itself, um, even as you chop up these sessions and, and but it, have uh, an idea of the big picture thing. We've discussed some of this along the way of planning and so forth, but um, these boundaries of boxed uh, values help really gauge areas for excellent responsive trades with low risk um, and, and, um, and a primary means of, of getting on to the initial leg of an auction. On top of um, value distributions that occur um, between sessions or weeks, uh, it's, it's particularly important to, to discuss the fact that there's a little bit more weight, or I personally put a, lot, uh, a little bit more weight on the session aspect to the RTH, the prior RTH. So immediate response in the following RTH open session, you can see early activity or signs into uh, European value or Asian value session, but you're going to um, have a cleaner and, and more responsive activity um, simply by even gauging just the prior RTH session. And if that was the only one you're using as far as grouping and, and boxing, you can get a very, you can get very good insight for, uh, for key zones for activity. So on top of, um, looking at value areas from, from a planning aspect, 
we also have to keep in mind that uh, that the LVNs are, are are very important, specifically the primary LVNs, which are the deepest uh, LVNs in the profile. These can become key areas of inflection um, and help you uh, help you not only position co uh, correctly but early um, with with minimal risk to the ops at high volume edge. And and so let's look at how this is actually utilized from a primary LVN and a session by session impact. Here in this slide, this blue arrow signifies a primary LVN, deepest low volume node from a European session near the low end of that value. Okay. So as the RTH opens right here, you can see it immediately pressed into that European value and into to the T that primary LVN before cell initiation reoccurred. Okay. Upon that cell initiation, when escaping that European value, targeting um, initially is that Asian session value. So if we look at this here, we can see how, um, especially upon entry here, as, as this rejects that value here, we had a nice back test into a primary LVN into here, allowing for positioning safely against that low volume area seeking an initial um, area for continuation from this value high. And, and sometimes what you'll get is, is just a push through. And if it doesn't stop here, it attempted to at that low volume area or value low area, then you can gauge your sequence of continuation in that manner. In this slide, um, you can see uh, primary LVNs in the blue, blue arrows, and then prior session value areas in the gray, okay, gray arrows. And so the sequence that exists here is testing prior value, okay, and primary low volume areas met with rejection and initiation from them. So here in this RTH session, what we get towards the end of that session is the formation of this primary LVN in that value. In the Asian session, it really goes nowhere until it pushes into the beginning of the European session back into this primary LVN with a push away. And again, here before rejecting out of value and creating new value above. So like I said, I'm, I do put a bit more weight on the prior RTH session, the primary LVNs of those um, <clears throat> with respect to what occurs overnight. When we look at a weak um, profile, there's two main components. The, again, the value area and the LVNs, uh, they provide a playground of that auction activity. <laughs> I like to refer to it as playground because when you map this out for an entire week, um, you, there, there's so much opportunity that exists within those parameters that, that there's, a lot, there's a lot of ways to uh, skin this cat. Um, responsive natures of these levels, prior week value area, if I project them forward here in the teal, what we can see is where they're either protecting and doing their best to responsively trade out of that, and then when it finally gives, pressing in and, and through that value. And once that gives here and it attempts to reject, we see that full traverse of, uh, of the weekly of that prior weekly value with the responsive activity at the prior week's value area low. So in the same way that you would use this on a session, the session is just occurring in a fast time frame. We can, we can gauge this or continually look at this at the end of the day um, before the market opens the next day. Hey, where do we, at, where are we at with respect to this? Uh, this is a, this is a roadmap now. And, and, that that prior uh, week's value area is going to is going to allow you to to set back a little bit if you're if you're dancing around in the middle if you're dancing around in a zone that uh, well I kind of want to wait to get to those areas of 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 higher time frame inflection to to gauge your response even upon leaving this value area beginning this week this week here and pressing back in. In that rejection, it came right back. And where did it fail from? It failed from a primary LVN from the prior week. And that's important. 
So rather than keeping this whole conglomerate as a composite, <clears throat> just marking this once at the beginning, helping utilize that as part of your playground. Now you have three great references for means of trade. You have primary LVN here, you have value area high for continuation, you have very area low for responsive activity. And, and from those, um, it's gonna grant a wider range of understanding of where we could go and what could happen when we get there. So volume profile live application. We've talked about the planning phase and on the current session, we wanna know what about the build? Where is volume accumulating? Where is it becoming active? And, and how is that related to what I've planned? Entry specifics are gonna be volume build or lack, and then the time and sales and DOM. These two are gonna be covered later today. And, and as we piggyback on this information from this portion, it, it'll bring that whole picture together. But we're also gonna discuss leg to leg profile, how to manually do it, what, it, what does it tell you and how to utilize that as an edge as far as risk management goes. So where's volume adding current session build? So upon a session open, you can see that this is dragging and drawing the volume profile. As that volume is building, it's showing interest upon that push up. And it isn't until it begins to traverse the LVNs and come back into prior areas of interest that it rotates. And so when you get a unidirectional mover, single direction, the price activity is moving just because it is at a range that is uncomfortably one direction doesn't necessarily mean it has to turn around. An easy way to gauge the end of a leg is how well does it do as far as getting back under low volume areas? Like look through here when this drags out, because this is building, you get an LVN up here. And so when this pushes up in here, we'll see this traverse the low volume area right here. How well does it do getting back into prior areas <clears throat> of engagement? And so, as it's holding and testing LVNs and continuing, that's showing the leg is not finished. Um, or, or like I say sometimes, she ain't done. And that's a way to gauge this very cleanly up, uh, upon the fresh build of a profile in a session. Leg to leg is simply when you have an inflection point or a specific leg of the auction that goes one direction, it changes direction, starting a profile at the beginning of that leg in order to gain an understanding of that new leg of the auction. In this leg up, okay, that volume profile provides, on the way up, provides areas for responsive entry, LVNs to get to bid against, and for, see, continue that continuation of that move. When it pushes below that LVN here and begins to push, now we can do the same thing on the opposite side. We have LVNs above us in order to step into and and um, and lean against to join the primary direction of that leg. So again, as this leg builds underneath of us, um, as it's building interest above, you can see how it's beginning to, um, it, what it does is it holds those LVNs and provides opportunity for continuation. And then as it disrespects, the LVNs pushes back into prior areas of interest, starting a new leg of a profile in order to take those back tests of LVNs. Here we go, back test right here into that LVN that, that it sliced through, got back at the distribution, came back, back tested that, and we can begin seeking targets from this leg. So prior profile, this is just a different, this is a period of a profile instead of a certain time frame. So this here grants us a target end here into this tail or this low volume area from that first build on the opposite direction of the move. So what about leg to leg profile trade management? Upon the leg of a move, okay, um, ent entry against LVN as, as um, interest continues to build and hold LVNs, um, what you wanna gauge is two LVNs, two primary LVNs behind the current price activity. And that is a generic rule of thumb, but I can tell you how 
uh, stress-free and easy it is um, to allow runners to move in that fashion, especially in wider ranges where you have a wider distribution. These arrows are signifying these primary LVNs as they move up and begin to form two LVNs back, okay? So watch this first one come in. Now it needs to respect this here. It does at this point. Auction pushes up. Now it needs to respect this. It does. It provides three entry opportunities. And then here, boom, pushes. And it begins to breach that. that that's why that arrow turned red, because that's when that would uh, tick off that, that runner from system. So leg to leg profile, utilizing that for trade management, as well as seeking entry on the fly, is, is in my opinion, a very powerful way to go about um, utilizing this in an intraday basis. Okay, how many times during the day do you see uh, uh, something that is a stark inflection, even if it's something like this, a push up here, a turn direction, a turn of direction, a turn of direction, um, or just an area of consolidation. Where are we gonna break out of that consolidation? Well, let me look at that consolidation because if I draw it over that consolidation and we start building away from it, now I know the move is on. So a leg to leg profile, is utilized in that fashion, isolating a specific leg of the auction. And even in hindsight, as that leg is formed, okay, now I wanna to seek to get on board with this move. Okay, as it tests those LVNs, we're going to be going with the move. As it begins to auction back below those LVNs, now I need to, to flip and work in that same uh, fashion, but in the opposite direction. One second here. So um, the return to value trade activity. So activity building volume back inside of a value range can ultimately target the opposite side of value. I had this posted up here earlier, but let's take a look at this. And this makes sense even on a, um, if we were to think about this on a leg to leg fashion. So here we see that this this pushed up, it rejected, it came down here, it auctioned out of value. And upon coming back into value, it began to seek the opposite end. This here is, is utilized to, uh, honestly, uh, the, most, the most common way I utilize this is to keep me from chasing a breakout, okay? Um, not only that, but as, as this pushes back up into value, what I would be seeking is making a leg profile from that rejection point, pushing it all the way out so I can watch it build. And then as I'm inside of that value, I want to be, to be matching that, va that value area um, level as close to the nearest primary LVN as possible, utilizing that as a risk zone to enter that trade on a pullback end and let that move then against the grain of that value until we satisfy that auction leg to the opposite side. Okay, that's a return to value. So escaping value, coming back in, leaning on not only just the value level that you've been keying on it returning inside of, but having the awareness of finding, okay, here's the nearest LVN with this on this leg, and I'll use that as a risk, risk zone in order to allow this auction leg to come to completion to the other end of that auction. Trade idea two, volume ledge. So we talk about a volume build and a ledge is just this. You can see how it's flat, it's not tapered, it is simply a ledge. And so a ledge is a sign of temporary exhaustion. It's an unfinished auction. Um, and so the way this is, is Util the way I utilize this is a rebid or reoffer from a primary LVN or structural reference um, that could be a value area uh, or an area that you have a support or resistance. Um, in order to press into the ledge, put, pop the ledge and begin to actually transact beyond it and to see how, uh, how far that auction wants to go. So when that ledge forms, there's time to look at it. Okay, so I would be looking up here at this primary LVN or in that vicinity for exhaustion back up in in order to position short and push this ledge. 
because once that goes, there is one more piece to this puzzle. I just want to want to let this clear up here. <clears throat> once this goes, boom. Now that ledge is a line in the sand. I mean, to the tick, that line in the sand is now, hey, if, if since this was an area of exhaustion and they push through and they've continued this auction, if they get back inside the ledge, then that activity that is going in that direction is now off and it is now support to push away in the opposite direction. So a ledge is a sign of temporary exhaustion. You don't just want to squint your eyes and try to find one of these on all your profiles. You want them to stick out in this manner that you're seeing right here, where it's very clear. It's very, uh, it's very stark. And, um, and so then once that ledge is breached, re offers from the ledge in this example are appropriate to go in the primary direction of trade, because you know that if it gets back above that ledge, the trade is off. And therefore, in my mind, uh, that is a clean example of, of minimal risk and also um, also managing risk. This can be traded two ways. First off, I don't ever fade this. If I see this, I'm not I'm not a buyer. Um, if I see it on the upside, I'm not a I'm not selling. Um, the first way to trade this is to allow this to push up in in, in order to position to take it out. And the second way to trade this is upon traversing it back through, changing legs and getting on board with a reversion activity. LVN return. This one here is uh, a bit nuanced. I have discussed this to some degree within the group. However, we haven't gone into a lot of detail. Price auctions through an LVN from a build and respects the LVN for continuation. This is a very fast type of entry, but it is also extremely common. Um, continuation is seen with the respect of the LVN up upon each leg. And so with this here, what we had, and I'll let this reset, is um, this push down created a node. It immediately came back above the LVN and it settles and it no, finds no further interest below that LVN. Now we have this node below us that is not a taper, but that exhausted push and protection of LVN is a means to enter with risk to the opposite edge of that low volume area and see continuation as it pushes, holds LVN, pushes, holds LVN, pushes, holds LVN. This is one of, uh, one of my favorite types of setups. Um, because of the frequency it occurs and the ease in which you can um, truly just cut the trade and you know immediately if it's failed. So as this pushes back in and holds LVN, you, it, a lot of times, especially in the world of scalping intraday, you can get a lot of, a lot of scalps out of something like this, holding LVN and then we'll see it push, then we'll see another yellow arrow. where it does it again. And this is how I would gauge that risk because if we auction back under this yellow arrow, then we're back into that prior zone, back testing this lower LVN. So keying or visually seeing where is where do we come from, where are we going? How is that auction moving and how does it relate to the stair step sequence of the volume building or lacking in itself? That's the LVN return.